And Randall Smith is notorious for putting errors into uh, his schematic. Hello everybody, Brad the Guitologist here. In this video I thought I would do a little bit of a post-mortem on this uh, Mesa Bass 400 amplifier that I featured in my last video. Uh, in the comments on that last video, it was brought up, and rightly so. A couple people really didn't understand why the amplifier was repaired, uh, or you know, more specifically, why the EQ section uh, was repaired by what I had done to it. And I kind of agree, I really didn't make that clear, and to be frank with you, I really didn't quite understand it myself. I just counted my lucky stars at that point, because I think it was like, I don't know, it was past midnight, and I was ready for bed, so I was just like, screw it. Um, I'm done screwing with this thing, and uh, so let's wrap it up. But I, you know, on further consideration, it, it's really doing an injustice if I don't explain what I think happened to make it work again. And also in this, we're going to uh, we're going to apply some silicone to each of these caps uh, in order to kind of adhere them to the board. Uh, that's the way they were um, initially, and I didn't have any silicone so I'm gonna apply some of that to get these all adhered to the board also so uh, let's go ahead and put the silicone on and then we'll get into the nitty-gritty of why uh, this thing was repaired the way it was and also if you haven't seen that previous video I will link it right down here in the description or in the first comment or something like that where you guys can click on that and go watch that first if you'd rather you know see both of these videos in proper succession okay let's apply some silicone to these and basically, what, what we just want to do is kind of silicone them together, and then we'll come back and silicone them to the board as well. The reason for doing this is kind of twofold. First, it kind of secures them into place so they don't, uh, they don't try to jump out of the amplifier um, during travel. Uh, the other reason is so that they don't rattle against one another when you have this thing uh, sitting on top of a you know big cabinet. And if you look inside this amp, uh, most of the parts that could move have been siliconed down, including most of these little caps over here. Um, these caps have all been siliconed together as well, and we'll go ahead and do that with this cap that we replaced to we'll silicone it to its neighbor I'll be the first to admit that makes things a little less attractive in here but um, it does also make it a little more reliable uh, I'm gonna come in here and kinda smooth some of it out and clean it up a little bit but uh, but that's essentially what we needed to do so uh, let's flip this thing over and I'll show you uh, why I think it is that this is now repaired Okay, if you watched the last video, you'll undoubtedly recall um, this graphic EQ that we looked at. Um, and here is the schematic for it. And you'll probably also remember me testing this point uh, right here on Q1 on the base and finding uh, no voltage resembling 21 and a half volts. And I tested this component, I tested this 470, I tested this one, I tested this to try to figure out why the high voltage that we had up here it was in the range of negative 50 or so 60 something volts I think at this point uh, why it wasn't uh, making its way over here and and powering this transistor turning it on um, well what we ended up doing is I suspected that this switch was bad if you'll recall and at one point I pulled it out of circuit but not before testing this point like I said several times and coming up with a uh, resistance from here to ground in the range of about uh, 15k okay so I was real puzzled by that I was like why are we getting to 15k and I was also assuming um, in my own defense that this switch was in the bypass position so it was in the up position here so it wasn't even connected right here or it shouldn't have been and maybe I made a mistake and and just had the switch flipped the wrong way which I guess would be easy to do if you just reached under here and you know I assumed I remembered which way was which but um, to clarify that I did think that this switch was in the up position so I was thinking well there's got to be another path to ground from within the switch somewhere or you know path back through the circuit or something it's not supposed to be measuring you know 
in the range of 13, 14K essentially. Um, so I went round and round and round, eventually pulled this switch out, if you'll recall. And that's about the time uh, that it seemed we started getting our, uh, uh, we started seeing a bigger resistance to ground, I believe. Um, also, we, uh, we changed this 0.1 capacitor at the same time we changed this transistor. Uh, and there is that new transistor right there. And it's just a generic, uh, what is it? It's a, it's a 2N 3906, very, very common transistor found in a lot of applications. Um, so I substituted that at the same time that I changed uh, this capacitor here. And I had assumed that there was this was the, the capacitor must have somehow uh, fixed the issue, and you can see the trace on the board right there, um, where it goes, and it actually is connected for whatever reason. It's connected. It's connected to the base of this transistor. Uh, and to prove that, I'll show you. But yeah, here, just in case you didn't believe me, I'll show you that the base of this transistor, which is Q1, is connected to this 0.1 capacitor right here. And yeah, see, there's no there's no resistance there. So they are they are indeed connected. You know, that's different than what we see here, right? I have heard from more than one tech that Randall Smith of Mesa Boogie would intentionally draw errors into the schematics. Uh, in order that if they did leak out, and I got this schematic from the free freeinfosociety.com, by the way. So think thanks to them for the schematic. It's probably elsewhere as well. This is kind of an older one, so they're not as tight-fisted with some of their older ones. But um, they are tight-fisted with anything that is current production. You can't find schematics for a lot of their current production stuff. At least they don't give them out. You can find them if you dig. You have to know where to look on the internet, and you can find them. Um, but they are real tight-fisted about these schematics. They don't want these things getting out. Yeah, see, there are some other things about these schematics, too, like leaving the values blank. Like, see that value right there? That value right there is blank. So you would have to figure out what that is if you really want to troubleshoot. That value up there for that resistor is also blank. Uh, but here's what I think uh, ultimately is what the problem was. Uh, I think there may have been a problem with this capacitor. Uh, also, I think if you if you trace this schematic back, and if you look at the first part here where it comes, uh, where the EQ is jumpered in, so the signal comes here from from this cathode follower, it hits this capacitor, and then goes on uh, through the effects loop. If there's anything on it through the through the blend uh, to the graphic EQ here on the input, and the thing about the graphic EQ is. If, if this first Q1 uh, transistor is not operating, uh, these are, and this is something, a credit to, um, credit to a couple of uh, commenters, one in particular um, in the last video who said, hang on a second, those are, those are DC couples. So if Q1 wasn't working, then none of these would work, and that's true. Um, these are all getting their voltage from, from Q1. So the voltage is supplied, for the most part, the voltage is supplied here. It's supplied on this one also, but if these aren't operating, then none of the rest of these are, are gonna operate either. And it could have been brought on by the also by the failure of this capacitor. So I think we had a bad capacitor here that is connected to that, like I said, that trace right there that that's connected to goes to that, that base of this transistor. So to me, that you know, that's one of the uh, intentional mistakes that was put in there by Randall Smith of Mesa Boogie to throw people off the scent if they were trying to copy this board, for instance. Uh, also, just for giggles, I want to check out the voltages, and I did not do a post-mortem uh, voltage check on this board either. So let's go through and, and check out some of the base voltages. But we're getting 16.8 volts on the base of Q1, and if you'll recall, it was only like one point something volts. So that voltage is there. Let's check out the main voltage that's coming in because remember it was very, it was high. We, it was uh, over 70 volts. Now it's down to a more modest 55 volts. And the voltage on the other side of this dropping resistor is supposed to be uh, 32 volts. 
and we'll see how close that is. And it's a little high, 40. If we wanted to bring that down to 32, uh, we could change that little resistor right there, which I believe actually has already been changed at some point in the past, because you can see how the leg is just kind of laid across there. Um, but it is operating fine. I don't see any reason to bother with trying to experiment with values and change it, uh, seeing as it is operating. Let's check out the base of, say, this transistor, because I think it was in the range of like one volt too. So this one's like 16 volts. So that's more also like what we want to see. So yeah, see the voltage has returned and it is because uh, this capacitor was changed and it uh, would, would have prevented voltage from leaking back uh, to the rest of the amplifier. So, um, you know, I, I changed a couple of things and that's rule number one really of scientific experiments. You want to minimize your variables and I did not do that. At the very end of the evening, I was just kind of ready to get this thing out of my hair. So I changed the, the things I thought were just suspect. I said, let's just get rid of this problem once and for all. So I kind of shotgun those two capacitors and that transistor and called it a day and I really shouldn't have. So once again, thank you guys. Uh, thanks for watching this video. I hope you've enjoyed this little post-mortem. Hit the subscribe button if you have. And for now, y'all take care.